After my GNOME video, where I criticized this to some extent JEdit, a lot of people asked me how can you actually use Kate for development? And I think that a lot of people actually uh, underestimate Kate because it's a beautiful application with lots of features and you might not know about some of them. So the first one is extremely new, has just landed and it will be, it's in master and will be in the next Kate release and that is multiple cursors. So let's say that I want to edit all these three things to add a required in front of them. What I can do is click here like this and then alt click here and then alt click here and then I just be able to type in all of those like lines at the same time which is so cool and I can do that even if it's not the same line just in random points like this whatever it's amazing and it's not just this you can also invoke this by going here and then pressing I need to read this one control alt arrows and like this Ah, sorry, this is actually overridden by GNOME gestures. Sorry, it's, uh, it's the only one that I hadn't tested. What I did test though, is that you can select a block of text and then press Shift-Alt-I and it will automatically add a cursor to all of the lines. So you can type on all of them at the same time, which is pretty cool. If that wasn't enough, you also get not only multiple cursors, but also block modes. So what is that? You can go, Control shift B and you can enter block mode. And uh, if you select, you will see that it's actually blocks if you select them. And in theory, you can just do like this and it will work similarly to before as if you had multiple cursor, but it will actually completely disregard the flow of text and act if everything was just, just like spaces, just like this. This is actually extremely extremely useful if you have like multiple rows of I don't know it's like a CSV and you need to edit that it happened to me super useful you can just take this delete and it's like the whole block gone block mode is like my favorite feature that few people know about if block mode wasn't enough you can also go into edit and then select inside of uh, input modes the V mode which actually makes it behave like V if you use V. Now, unluckily I have no clue whatsoever on how V works, but I know lots of people like love it. Was it this is insert, okay, so I, I managed to insert something and then it was like A, no. This is where my knowledge of V ends. I know I to insert text and that's it. If you know V, this might be of more interest to you than it is to me. The next one, is similarly, let's actually control Z that. If you use something like Macintosh, you know, there's a spotlight there and it allows you to search uh, through actions. And you also get this in here, as in most KDE apps, if they are updated, if you press control alt I, you can actually search through all of Kate actions and you also get how to invoke them. So if I completely forgot how to find something, I can type search as an example or find, here is it. Find is control F, replace is control R and so on. I can type, I don't know, block mode and it's control shift B as an example, cursors, stuff like this. Create multiple cursor from selection. The one I showed you before is alt shift I and so on. Alt shift up also move cursor to previous matching intent. So if you ever forget about some shortcut or some action, you can just press Control Alt I and that's it. That's the only one you need to remember. Next one is the split view because of course split view is not that complex, but it's easy to forget just how powerful the split view here is. So let's split like horizontal. So we've got like two views and then I can further split this one vertically and also like this one vertically even more. And this one I could split view again horizontally and all of this is drag and droppable. So you can customize whatever amount of views you want to whatever layout you want. And uh, I mean, it's really easy to forget that you can actually do all of this and to close them, maybe I remember the shortcut. I think it's Control Shift R, yes. And just like that, we are back to normal. 
Next one is pretty cool, pipe to terminal. So if we have a file, and by the way, you also get a terminal, I keep it on the right. But I mean, this is normal stuff, right? Just a terminal. Let's actually zoom in here. No, it won't zoom in. Thank you, GNOME overriding my keyboard shortcuts. Let's say that I actually write some command here, like hello world. I can go to tools and then I can pipe the content of the kit file to the terminal like this. And you can see here, hello world. And I can type anything here, like as an example, this one. And then I just go here, tools, and then I pipe to terminal and then it will actually do it. Let's not do that. And this is the terminal. Next is scripts and let's zoom in even more. Oh, by the way, in Kate, you can, uh, you can actually zoom in the text by default out of the box without needing some third party uh, plugin. If you have a number, let's say, you can go into tools and then inside of scripts and met, and then you can decrease number by one, which sounds cool. Of course, uh, it was faster to do it by hand, but what's the point? So in here, you actually get whole sections of, of scripts, which can like you call them and they can edit your text, making your life simpler. As an example, if you work with HTML, uh, you can like select HTML tag contents it inwards or outwards, and you can set keyboard shortcuts to all of these. As an example here on navigation, you do get some with uh, some uh, in here as well with shortcuts. And uh, you probably can also create your own. I never did that. Maybe. A, if you want, I can investigate to do a video about that if you're interested. But the sole fact that you have scripts and they can edit your file like in whatever way, like 10 plus 11, and then tools, uh, scripts, and met, where is it? Evaluate a simple mathematical expression, and that's it. That's just cool. Like Then if you need it, uh, if you don't know how to spell in English, you do actually get a spelling and uh, in here you can select the correct word. By the way, if you see that the selection is a bit bugged, that's because I'm currently in GNOME and I'm forcing Breeze from KDE to GNOME. That's not really working beautifully, but that's on me. Anyway, as I was saying spelling, you can actually select the correct word, which in, in this case was hello. So you do get, if you need it, uh, spelling checking. Then you also get sessions. So to explain sessions, let's actually get back to my important files, which is this one. And let's do a bit of split view. So let's split vertical and let's take main QML and config overlay. So I can go into sessions, manage them, and uh, I can do a new session and it will be empty. And I should be able Sorry, I had forgot an important step. Session, you can save session as uh, this is for editing panel and putting space in here so that some developer somewhere gets angry. And then I can just do a new session, which will be empty. And then in here, quick open, this is for editing panel and everything will be brought back to what it was. So it's a bit like, I don't know, activities if you use them but just inside of Kate. So if you're editing some files, you can just create a session to edit those files because maybe you edit them frequently. You can even like the session will save as far as I know all of the views and uh, like as an example, let's do a new session and then in here, let's close the view, this, yes. And then a quick open this one and I get back to the split view exactly how I resized this. Pretty useful if you frequently edit some files and you do split view between them. This is very fast. What else? So let's take this file as an example. You will notice, I mean, there are some like nice features which are not super important right now. Like as an example, if you have begin, then you can actually type a word here and you can do code folding till end, which is nice. And you can also do fix me and to do and this will actually, you know, highlight those words. Let's add another to do as an example, like this. Now, if I'm in the file and I forgot what I was doing, I can go inside 
projects and in here I have project to do's which will actually, let's resize this, let me see all of the to do's in my project which in this case is not just this file but all of the files in the project that I have which in this case is Plasma Desktop so what you're seeing right now are all of the to do's in all of Plasma Desktop code base interesting right? and of course I can search between them like I don't know okay that, that was enough to break it well done Nicolo and uh, it's very nice how this is actually a search and replace so technically you can see that you have tabs so a feature is that you can do tabbed find and replace cool <laughs> so I have one last which is simpler but I think we should also appreciate how cool the sidebars are so here you've got documents which open up all of the documents that you've opened preserving uh, the folder structure only for the documents you actually have open this is my favorite sidebar I keep it open all of the time then you also get, get project which will show you all of the folders inside of the project which as you can see is Plasma Desktop the name is here you can even switch between projects by clicking on the name and it will also show you the branch and if you click on the branch you can create a new git branch or you can switch to another one like just like that you can also have an entire panel which is just for git when you can uh, commit stuff in this case I do not have a git GUI installed and I have nothing to commit fair enough and uh, in here you can see I can do git push git pull and everything related to git so I don't even need to open up the terminal to use git it's just everything of it it's here yeah, uh, yeah sorry I, I can't commit I understood that sorry about that let's close this I also get a view with the inter file system because I mean and I can drag and drop do you want to load all files nope so if you want to uh, open a directory with a lot of files in it you just drag and drop it and it will open all of the files inside of that directory recursively which is pretty cool then you also get of course the terminal you get the output for things like git then the search the project which is uh, like a code analysis and stuff like that personally I never use this one but uh, if you do use these things like Python code analysis this might be useful to you you can even type notes about your project and finally uh, the last one of the last features that had been implemented to Kate is that you can actually now see the path to the uh, to your files here at the top let's close this one and you get here you can see my main.qml is inside of containment panel contains contents UI and if you click here you can quickly select other files within here and if you click here you can quickly select other folders and files inside of them so you can very quickly switch between files just thanks to this very like it's a breadcrumb I think it's called that probably not pronounced like that uh, just inside of Kate and that was everything from my side this is like 15 minutes 15 minutes of Kate being awesome and honestly I could go on it, this is just the features that I know of that I quickly saw and some of them I use like every day like block insertion is so cool and now that I also have multiple uh, cursors I'm gonna use that believe me and uh, some of them I don't use like the V mode sorry I haven't learned V and uh, you know if you do development right now and you want a light lightweight code editor maybe it's not like a full-fledged uh, IDE but it gets very close see you tomorrow